Hi, it's Angus from colormanagement.ca. I'm going to take a, a moment and explain to you how to maximize your proofing if you have only a device that prints with an RGB profile. So if you're printing through the driver directly to your Epson, you are printing via an RGB device. Doesn't matter if you send CMYK or RGB, the driver will convert that to RGB when it sends it to the device. So you are utilizing an RGB device. As a quick overview, this red inner quadrant, if you will, is the swap profile, which is here. The outside one is your full Adobe RGB profile. And this inside one is the Epson 3880 Premium Luster profile, somewhere in between. So your image is going to obviously be larger in most cases than the uh, swap profile and you're going to need to downgrade what's happening. So let's do a comparison. If you have your outer profile, which is your RGB device, and you're trying to send the proof to a client and the client is printed on swap, number three, you're going to get a disconnection because yours is going to have a bigger gamut, more vibrant colors than are possible on that printing device. I call proofing giving the bad news early because you can show the client a beautiful, bright, high gamut proof. And yes, that is a representation of the image and it can be very color accurate to the image, but it is unreproducible, right? There are obviously colors in this image. If we do a gamut warning, there are colors on this image. And right now I'm targeting to grackle that are absolutely out of the gamut, right? It's impossible to reproduce this image. If I do a command Y, it's doing a RGB to the US web coded swap. So you can obviously see on screen a massive degradation of the image. And I think in this case, I have the paper white simulation turned on, right? So you can see that this image is obviously, as I say, command shift Y will put out a gamut on the Mac. Command Y will turn on the gamut warning. Okay, so again, proof custom, I'm setting up to swap proof. And if I do the gamut warning, it'll show you the out of gamut ranges. Okay, so we know this image is out of gamut. So how can we print this image and retain color accuracy for our client? This little box up here in the top right corner is the trick. If you are, and you need to be in color management, of course, if you want to print full gamut and you want to show this image in its maximum color range to the maximum of your profile, right, which again is this outer region, okay, then you leave it in this mode and you select printer manages color photoshop manages color sorry and you go to your output profile that you've created that is custom for that device let's say epson 3880 uh per premium luster i presult it perm it's premium i know so that will give you the maximum color gamut as we showed before but if you turn on proof now photoshop is saying okay i'm going to dumb this down even further i'm going to now target the maximum colors to that of whatever profile you select here in this section. Now for me, it's going to there, but it could be going to my working CMYK, which is Grackle, which is a little bit bigger, or you could go to various different soft proofing setups that you have set up as I have set up under soft proofing, okay? So working CMYK, custom setup, let's use that one, which is swap. Okay, so let's explain this down here a little bit. Simulate paper color. That is going to lay down a tint to make the paper color, the white, which is really in printing the fifth color, match that of the target. So a web swap coded has a very, no, I say very, has a, a more yellowish and warmer color. It's more, you know, it's not as bright white as you can get on your screen. And obviously Epson Premium Luster has a brightness that is way, way brighter than any press paper can reproduce. So the white values, the contrast values, uh, the areas of the paper that are really no ink laying down will have a tone applied to mimic that of the output. And keep in mind in Photoshop, if you put your mouse over things, it'll tell you what it does. Okay, so simulate the paper color, simulate back black. Personally, I think this is too strong. I think that it tends to overdo or over accentuate the issue at times and may distract people a little too much from the proof. Again, if you're using a really bright white stock, it's worth trying to see if you see a better you know, resemblance. And ideally, it would be to have a copy of the paper 
that you are targeting in your proofing to be able to see if it matches and then to be able to do a comparison visually to see if it is a better setting. Again, the bright white of an Epson Premium Luster will be much brighter than that stock of a swap magazine condition. So you have to take it into consideration and decide which one's better for you. But I always use the simulate, simulate black ink because the Epson's black is much, much blacker than a press black, and this will bring things in line. Okay? So you've picked up the profile for your device. You've selected swap as your targeting profile for proofing. Again, to dumb down the look of the proof to be inside the swap profile, not the maximum gamut of your device. And then you print. What you'll end up with is a proof that should look more like what we're seeing on screen here, not the maximum gamut. So when proofing, it's important for us to at least understand what it is we're trying to do. Are we trying to show the client the accuracy of the capture, the accuracy of the image? This is the best that can be done. And I take it back to the days of the transparencies when we gave a client a transparency, that told the client that you had captured it properly. Tonality was there, color range was there, and you had done your job as a photographer to ensure you had the best capture possible. From that point on, it was up to the color separators, the scanner operator, whomever, to be able to get that to work in CMYK. Obviously, that was very difficult, and especially in images like that, but we knew there was going to be a sacrifice. Today, there's misconceptions between what's being given and what's being received. I think it's important at least to establish if you're giving an RGB proof, an Epson Premium Luster, for example, that you don't call it a proof to the destination, you call it a proof to the capture. Okay, there's a dis difference and a distinction there. You are proofing to the capture, not to the final destination of the magazine. You're basically going backwards and saying, this is what I captured, it's accurate, I did my job, you can now pay me and my job is done. Now it's up to pre-press or printing or whoever to make this hugely out of gamut image work. And that's really better suited for them because that's their forte, that's what they know. So something to consider. So I hope that helps to clear up a little bit of the whole misconception of printing, proofing, and profiles, and I hope that was of some value to you. If you do have any areas of which, which, of which you would like me to discuss, feel free to send me an email and uh, I'll make a movie about it. Thanks again.